You are listening to The Centropic Oracle, an audiobook podcast of science fiction and fantasy short stories that make you think and feel. Ferusa Among the Stars by Michael Haynes She woke in a void, weeping. The taste of her tears increased her sorrow, for their salty essence was like the waters of the Aegean, the waters she and her sister Dynamina had once called home and it was for lost Dynamina that she wept. There was a time when the sailors had entreated the sisters to bring them swiftly to their destinations. Ferusa, she who speeds. Dynamina, she who has power. But man had learned speed. Man had learned power. And the sisters were forgotten. Ferusa had held faith that there would be a day when man would need them yet again. Dynamina had not believed, and she had withered to nothing. Still, Frusa had waited in the silvery cave of the nymphs, praying to Pontus, to Tethys, praying that her faith was not in vain. Now she had lost even her beloved waters. Pinprick lights of stars surrounded her. Frusa was adrift within the sky. Without the rise or fall of the tides, the beat of the waves, the reflection of the rising or setting sun on the waters, Frusa had no sense of time's passage. It could have been a day or a year since she had awoken. She wished to return to her slumber, to the internal void which held no memories, no sense of loss, no pain. But this was denied to her. At last, she moved. The sky's waters were nothing like the earth's. They gave barely any resistance and there was no life here, no silty bottom to explore. They were boundless and vacant. Among the stars... Frusa swam, and still she wept. She sensed the humans before she could see their vessel. The flow of emotions from their minds was the first familiar thing she had experienced in this place. It guided her like a beacon, and she sped to the source. The ship was nothing like the ships she and Dynamina had aided. But what she felt from the people within it was clear. Hope. Fear. Prayer. The prayers were not to her. The women and men prayed to the same gods as the sailors of the new ships which ventured on the earth's seas, but the words of their prayers were as well known to her as the currents of the Aegean. Please let us get home safely. Save us. Give us speed. She was puzzled. Even without a shore for reference, she knew that this ship was moving faster than any she had ever known. Yet there was no mistaking what was in the minds of those on board. Ferusa glided alongside the vessel. She found that she could enter into it, pass through its walls and cabins unseen and unfelt. She could see the strain on the faces of the crew and ached to relieve their fears. This ship had speed, but clearly it was not enough. And there were no sails Frusa could fill with winds, no oarsmen whose straining muscles she could calm. She searched the ship and the minds of those on board, striving to understand its means of propulsion. The thoughts and terms were unfamiliar, hard for her to comprehend. But her constant wakefulness served her well in this regard. She spent every moment on this problem, and even as the thoughts of those around her darkened and hope dissipated, she came closer to understanding what ailed the ship. She delved into the guts of its engine, to its thrusters, its coils. Though all of these were strange to her, she managed to sort out how they worked together, how they made this sailless metal ship of the void move. More time passed as Frusa went deeper still into the workings of the unit. She paid no heed to the people around her, though their prayers hummed ceaselessly through her mind. At last, she determined what adjustment she would make. Frusa offered a quick prayer of her own that it would be the correct action. Then she caused the delicate realignment of two pieces in the engine to occur. Almost immediately she could feel the engine's increased power. Soon she sensed the crew's spirits lift, heard their shouts of joy and their unuttered prayers of thanks. Her work done, Frusa watched as these women and men performed their own tasks. And then there was speed. Glorious speed. More than anything she had ever felt before. Frusa stayed with the vessel, reveling in its swiftness. 
She slipped beyond the ship's walls after some time, more alive than she had been since the days when she and Dynamina had brought sailors safe to their destinations. Alone again, she wept once more for Dynamina, who had not had faith enough in her purpose to see this day. She would always mourn her lost sister, but Frusa felt joy in her own renewed purpose as she sped through the void, these seas without wave or floor, in search of other sailors whose prayers she could answer. We hope you enjoyed Ferusa Among the Stars by Michael Haynes, read by Laura K. MacDonald. If you'd like to make a donation to the author and narrator of this story, check out the story page link in the description and click the PayPal Donate button, or pledge your support to us directly on Patreon. Would you like to submit a story to the Centropic Oracle? A link to our submission guidelines can be found in the description. <laughs>